be on the table for the holiday feast. Others right now, though, are starting to feel like they're in a fog, going through the motions of holiday preps and traditions, but they're overcome with sadness and confusion over the loss of a loved one. Erin Nelson is the executive director of Jessica's House, the Central Valley's only freestanding grief support program. And she's here with me live to talk about all of those grappling with grief over the holidays. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Sansi Ray. So much of the next six weeks kind of bound up with traditions that have been held dear over several years, maybe generations all in a family, but without one of the people who maybe started those traditions or especially enjoyed one of them, it can be very painful for someone to go through those rituals. Now, is it best to bow out gracefully or how do you best suggest making a new tradition? Yeah, so when you're trying to just think about traditions that you once held when the person was there, um, you know, just when you think about bowing out gracefully, it's it's hard to say no, but you can give yourself permission to say no if the tradition just feels like too much for you right now. So this is a time um, when someone's missing that nothing really feels good or right. So you may just be trying to get through it. So you can say something like, thank you for the invitation. We would love to maybe go in the future, but for now, we're just not feeling up to it this year. Okay, really important to give yourself permission, which kind of we can be bad at all the time in many different areas, not just this. Jessica's house focuses on children, especially, and helping them confront all kinds of grief, how they process and need to process, maybe very different than how the adults in their lives are dealing with the same loss. So aunts, uncles, folks who don't see these little people every day, but maybe visiting now, they should recognize what their behaviors might really be about that they're seeing. Absolutely. Um, a child's behavior really teaches us so much about what's really going on underneath and to really focus on that. And they may naturally be uh, more anxious during that time. And so they need to find that comfort on a sensory level. So making sure they have their favorite stuffed animal or blanket can really help. And, you know, they may want to, they may have something that's really important to them about the holidays. So maybe it's that they want to decorate the tree like maybe their dad did, or maybe they want to make cookies like their mom. And so really asking children what is important to them for the holidays is, is really vital. And I would guess it's important to do that before you're right up against the time of that tradition. You don't want to be like starting to pull out the boxes or organizing something and then ask. You maybe want to do it now if it's a, if it's a Christmas tree tradition, right? Absolutely. Communication is everything. So talking as a family about what's important to each person. Grief is like our fingerprint. It's different for everyone. So each person in the family will be having a different reaction. So it's important to talk as a family about what's important to each person. Maybe somebody wants to keep food traditions. Another person wants time with family. So being able to identify what your values are and making sure to keep the children involved. We don't want anybody, child or adult, to try and push down their feelings and act like their grief really isn't there. So how can we remember a loved one this holiday season without getting stuck in the sadness? Yes, that's such a good thought. And um, just having those traditions of remembering is so important. Um, you can maybe light a candle in their memory. You may want to make their favorite food. You could share memories around the table. Maybe you want to go visit their grave site or scatter site. And so being able to talk as a family about how you want to remember them is important. There are lots of things that can be kind of uncomfortable over the holidays, too much to do, relatives you don't actually like and don't want to be around. How do you create a safe zone in which you can say no if you need to to events without feeling like you're making things more awkward? Yeah, so no is a complete sentence, right? And so it's hard to say no, but being able to just say um, no, it just is not going to work for us. And talk about what other traditions you might want to start can really help. And for those who are feeling hopeless right now, like the holidays will just always be hard, do we just have to accept that? You know, the holidays, I mean, when you're grieving, you feel like maybe I'll feel like this um, forever. And um, I just want to say like no feeling is final. So you can think of your feelings of grief kind of like the weather. Um, they will change moment by moment and it's okay to be sad. Um, you don't know how you'll feel in that next moment, the next day, but just feel and express whatever is um, coming up for you at that moment. 
we always like to say feel it to heal it and just emotions need motion and so that is how you heal is to really be honest and just trust that you won't always feel the way you do in this moment you've given us such important things to remember and i really like giving yourself the permission to feel what you're feeling and do what you need to do instead of necessarily paying attention what everybody else wants you to do. Thank you so much, Erin Nelson from Jessica's house to kind of help us with the healing that needs to happen over the holidays. We appreciate you. Thanks for having me, Sansuri. Definitely.